Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us here at Toronto Police Headquarters. I'd like to introduce today Detective Sergeant Jim Gotell, who will be updating us on an mur uh, attempt murder investigation that took place on Thursday, the 13th of April. Good morning. Today I will be updating the media on a shooting that occurred in the area of Vendome Place and Grenoble Drive in the City of Toronto. On Thursday, April 13th, 2017, at about 10 p.m., Samuel Taylor had been working on his car, which was parked on the side of the road. As he walked away from his car, he was approached by two men. The t each of the two men was armed with handguns, and one of the men immediately opened fire on Mr. Taylor. The second suspect also fired his weapon, and Mr. Taylor received, or Mr. Taylor was critically injured by multiple gunshot wounds as a result of the attack. After the shooting, the two men fled in separate directions. So, excuse me, after the shooting, the two men fled in separate vehicles that were waiting close by, a white colored vehicle and a dark colored sedan. Emergency services were notified of the shooting by many residents in the area. Toronto paramedic services and the Toronto police responded to the shooting. Mr. Taylor's injuries were treated and he was taken to hospital and admitted for the gunshot wounds that he received. Fortunately, Mr. Taylor survived this shooting. The shooting, the suspects, and the vehicles were captured on several video cameras in the area, and this has been edited into one continuous loop. This video of the shooting is being released now to the media, and it is hoped that one or both of the suspects or the vehicles will be recognized by a member of the public. Unfortunately, this was the fourth shooting that has happened in the last five months in this neighborhood. On January 16th, a car was found in an underground garage in this neighborhood that had been shot at numerous times in the hood and the uh, windshield. On February 17th, in the area of Don Mills Road and Gateway Plaza, an 18-year-old male was shot in the thigh and calf Three people have been arrested and charged in connection with this shooting by 54 Division. Also, on March the 13th, near Vendome Place in Grenoble Drive, a 15-year-old male was walking home after playing basketball. He was approached by two men who fired a weapon at him. He received one grazing bullet wound as a result of that attack. The Toronto Police Service are asking anybody who has any information on the shooting or the identity of the suspects or the vehicles or any of the other shootings that I've mentioned to contact 54 Division Major Crime Unit at 416-808-5400 or they can anonymously call Crime Stoppers at 416-222-8477. I would now like to introduce Mr. David Taylor. He is the brother of Samuel Taylor, who would like to say a few words. Mr. Taylor will not answer any questions after his statement However, I will be available to answer any questions following Mr. Taylor's statement. Hi, um, thank you for, uh, for uh, coming today. Um, on the evening of April 13, 2017, my brother Samuel Taylor was shot while visiting a friend in the Don Mills and Overly area. After being rushed to a hospital and life-threatening condition, he underwent numerous life-saving surgeries, and we are glad to say he's alive and recovering well. Um, police have released a video of the suspects, and on behalf of my family, the Taylor family, our extended family and close friends, I'm urging, I'm imploring that if anyone in the Flemington Park or Thorncliffe Park communities have any information regarding the shooting that occurred on the evening of April 13th, uh, to come forward and aid Toronto Police in this investigation. Uh, my family and I are glad that Samuel is alive, but uh, personally what keeps me up at night, what keeps all of us up at night is uh, the fact that these men are still at large and their guns can be used again on anyone they choose. Uh, gun violence has never affected this family before and we honestly don't know what to do. All we know is we almost lost a dear family member for what seems like no reason at all and at this point we're, uh, we're praying and putting our trust in God Toronto police and uh, the people of Toronto to help apprehend these uh, the violent men. I would be remiss not to mention that my brother Samuel is lucky to be alive. 
uh, as he wasn't the only person who was shot that weekend. This widespread violence is causing irreparable damage and it's tearing families apart. With that being said, I'm compelled to ask the citizens of Toronto to help police get these illegal firearms off the street uh, so these shootings don't happen anymore. Uh, thank you. Can you walk us through the video? It looks like there's three separate scenes. One, the, the first scene where the vehicle's parked. Sorry, yeah, you need the microphone. Uh, it looks like there's a few cuts there, but it looks like there's three separate scenes. Can you just walk us through from the beginning, sure. wherever it starts, and tell us what we're seeing? So we'll wait till it starts. Yeah, sure. Okay. We're kind of at the end of it at this point in time. So you can see uh, Mr. Uh, Taylor, he's working on his vehicle at this location, and he's being assisted by a cab driver that stopped to help him. That white vehicle that's that the, yeah, that's one of the vehicles that the suspects drove up in. And that, that's the white colored vehicle we're looking for. And the second vehicle, sorry, we just missed it. It just went around the corner, the dark colored sedan. This is um, a Vendome Place and Grenoble Road. Now you see the two suspects are coming across a walkway here. So they actually went down the street, they looped around and they came back. And they were, the two suspects are seen running away and they each get into separate vehicles after this. The shooting happened just after that, or just prior to that last clip. So it starts over again with Mr. Taylor working at his vehicle. So it looks like the vehicle comes up sort of Checks out the scene, circles around and comes back. That's right, and parks down the street out of sight of camera. Do you have any reason to believe that the two suspects knew the victim or had any interaction with him before? No, we don't. We, uh, Mr. Taylor was there to visit a friend, so we don't believe that the, uh, the uh, suspects knew Mr. Taylor, nor do we believe that he knew them. So it's a target of the wrong person? He was targeted. We don't believe it was anything that he did that caused him to be targeted, and it could very well be that he was the wrong person. We're still investigating that, and uh, we really can't comment because any further, because we don't want to compromise the investigation as it stands. But we have no reason to believe that uh, that uh, Mr. Taylor was targeted for anything that he had done or anything like that. So they're shooting from a height, uh, a raised walkway, or a they're no, no, they're at that level. They're. They're level with each other, so they're on the walkway. But I believe Mr. Taylor's on the walkway too, walking. He's, he had left his car, he had finished working on his car. He was walking away from his car. At the time, he was approached by these two people, so they're on the same level, and they begin to shoot at him. This is the walkway in the foreground? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Anything else? So what was Mr. Taylor doing here at the time? He had gone to visit a friend. He was uh, invited to visit a friend in the neighborhood. And when he got there, he had trouble with his vehicle, so he was trying to repair his vehicle. And you, you can see that a cab driver stopped to give him a hand to help to fix the vehicle. So when he got the vehicle uh, fixed, he did a, um, a circuit of the block to make sure everything was fine. He came back, parked his car, started to walk away from his car. It's that, at that point that he's approached by these two gentlemen who start to shoot at him. So were they waiting for him then, do you think? Or well, they, they did come back, so it does appear that they, they, they did wait and uh, they did wait for him, and they did target him. But uh, Mr. Taylor doesn't live in this area. Mr. Pardon me? Mr. Taylor doesn't live around this area. No, he does not. No, he was, again, there to visit a friend. Description-wise on the vehicles, you have pictures. Do you have any idea of make, model? No, we don't. Just the photos. Yeah, just the photos. Talk about Mr. Taylor's medical condition now. How is it been? He's doing better now. We were talking to his family today. He's gone through a very, very difficult process. Um, he had a number of surgeries. Uh, he was shot several times, and uh, he was very, very badly injured, and he is very lucky to be alive, and we're all grateful for that. But he's had a very difficult time, but he is recovering. We, we believe so. Yeah. You mentioned four shootings in five months in this neighborhood. Do you believe they are connected? Is this some sort of gang activity, or just happen to be four and five? Uh, we, these investigations, one of them has been concluded, so there's three that are outstanding at this point in time. Um, there may be links between uh, more than one of these shootings, but we can't really say any more at this point in time because I don't want to compromise any of the investigations that we are working on. 
but we really do urge anybody in the neighborhood who lives in this area that are witnesses to what happens and what occurs in their neighborhood and almost you know daily basis the violence that happens to police contact Toronto police that we want to end what is going on there Thank you. That concludes today's conference. The video and news release will follow.